Business and blood don't mix like politics with no tricks. Fighting business, serious risk. Number eight, know the date your taxes due. If you miss the deadline, they'll be coming for you. Number nine should have been number one to me. If you start a business, stay away from hobbies. Ah! What's happening? No cap. Yo, yeah, what's going on, fam? It's your boy Anthony O'Neill. Welcome back to the table. You guys already know we keep it real, relevant, and relatable every single Monday. And I'm super excited uh, because today is Monday. So it's Money Making Monday today because I got my boy Money Making, Mitch yes, and Sinea, in the building today uh, because we're going to teach you how Nine to fivers, check this out, how nine to fivers can turn their lifestyle, your lifestyle, into a tax write-off, legit, legally, and ethically. So, before I introduce my guests, let me turn off my phone. Uh, but before I introduce my guests, I did some research. Because today we're really talking about, you know, how to properly write off some things, um, how to not get over on the government because I don't want to promote something illegal or wrong morally, but daggone it, there are some ways that we can properly uh, write off some things legit, put more money back into your pocket, into my pocket, and I bought my CPAs in the building, okay? They in the building, and so we're going to get to them here in a little bit, but I want to set this up this way, okay? This year, the IRS issued 96 million refunds, totaling $270 billion mm. during this year's filing season, all right? So that means 96 million people overpaid on their taxes this year. Think about that. If you got a refund check this year, you overpaid, got your money back with no interest. None. So you loaned your money to the government who don't love us, who don't like us, who really don't care about us, and you didn't get a dime for it. My, 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 my. So no wonder why 50% of Americans feel like they paid too much money um, on their taxes. Because honestly, they did. Look, here's the truth. We work very hard for our money. You get up every single day. You get up Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Start it all the way over. You put in hard labor for your money. And taxes do help us pay for a lot of the public amenities that we really enjoy, like parks and roads. And I'm all for that. But wouldn't it be great, think about this, wouldn't it be great to lower our tax bill and keep more money in our pockets, put more money into our investment for that year to get the proper return to help us build wealth for our kids, to help us go out there and build wealth so we can eventually buy that dream home, buy that dream car, do something for our family so we can have the fruit of our labor. So, real much think about that because you know what? There's a little secret out there. I'm not knocking nine to five, it's because we've all been there. But if you own a business, taxes are probably your biggest expense. You could potentially increase your profits by lowering your tax bill. Well, guess what? Today we're talking to two amazing people, two dope black people. I said it, I'm black and I'm proud. They black and they dope, okay? <laughs> uh, because these two people are absolutely amazing. They're gonna teach us how we can lower our tax bill legally and ethically and take advantage of the tax code. And we know, trust me, most wealthy people, most millionaires and especially billionaires take advantage of the tax code. So you and I, can do that as well. So today, I'm joined by money-making Mitch, Michelle Valburn, and the People CPA, Shania Wilson. Uh, both are industry-leading tax experts and wealth educators <laughs> here at the table, boy. Uh, Michelle is an award-winning author and speaker from Florida. Now, Shania has been a future thought leader in CNBC and Forbes, and is also a real estate investor from the Bronx, New York. So y'all, welcome to the table. My CPAs, your CPAs for the day. Uh, Michelle and Shania, welcome to the table, fam. What up, hey, brother? What's up, oh, man? Sis, oh, this is <laughs> Yo, let's, 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 let's get straight into it, all right? Because here's one of the things that I, I really have learned. That my tribe, they work hard, mm -hmm. all right? And uh, my tribe are looking for ways on how do they want to get out of debt, okay? And I believe if we can save money on paying a lot of taxes, it'll help us put that money towards that. 
For sure. Um, and then we have a lot of entrepreneurs following me who have a full-time nine-to-five job, but they have a legit business on the side. Yeah. Majority are ladies, mm-hmm. all right? So 62% of my tribe are women who are out Amazing. there starting businesses. Amazing. Right? Love and her. so I want to help them. And I want us to take our time today. We in no rush. Y'all in Nashville, y'all came all the way up from Atlanta to chill with me. So yeah. I want to talk about what can we do to help my tribe do it. But before we get there, I like to set my whole show with, who are you all? And not, not the, you know, the CPAs, not the well-known people who are experts in this space, but at the core, who are you? What's your story? Mm. Let's go from ladies first. Of course. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, hello, hello, everyone. Again, thank you so much, Anthony, for having me at the table. Oh, thank you. You saved me a lot of money. To, listen, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> we got you, yeah. right? Um, so, again, I was born and raised in the Bronx, New York. I'm okay. raised by a single mother who I also have two younger brothers. Okay. Um, so, that pretty much was my beginning. Okay. Um, from then, I, you know, I grew up in the Bronx, so there was no talks about wealth, no talks about how the tax code is actually a blueprint to wealth building. Wow. Um, but I went on to study accounting at SUNY Morrisville, SUNY Oswego, and Rutgers University. Wow. So I actually do have an associate's degree, a bachelor's degree, and two master's degrees. Two master's Hello. In, in accounting. <laughs> you an <are> educated sister. Let's see, how yes. old are you? Is that two? I'm 27 years You 27? Wow. Wow. God, what the 27? You educated like that? <laughs> no, I ain't trying to put your business out there because you know before you know before I before we met, I had to research it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, you just recently even purchased your your mother a car. Yep. So I bought my mom actually a house 2018. I bought her the house. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I said car. You wouldn't add in there. Cause you bought your mom a house. Cause let's talk about the asset first before we talk about the liability, right? <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. You got the table. Talk about it. What is that? So the house was purchased in 2018. My mom, because she was a single mom, had to put her education on pause. So she just graduated with her master's degree this year. So that car was her gift from me, you know, because she put her stuff on pause for, so that I can be great. So now that I, you know, I can say I'm a little great, yeah. I can get back and, you know, allow her to live her life as she would have had she not had to take care of her kids. <laughs> so so let me just say this. All jokes aside, a 27-year-old at the cost of her mother went on to get her education. You took advantage of that opportunity. Now you've built enough wealth to where you can help your mom get her a house and get her a car. Yes. At 27 years old, a black sister from Bronx. From the Bronx. <laughs> Listen, so if y'all are questioning, well, what, what do these young people know about building wealth? I mean, she's done something I haven't done. I haven't bought my parents a house. So I, I'm bringing people to the table who are legit doing what they're saying that they're doing, and they're going to help us do that as well. I, I just wanted to just stop right there, no joking. I mean, that's major. Thank you. I'm proud of you. Thank you. And I, feel, I didn't know you bought your mom a house. I did not know that. Thank you. I mean, you know, some things you just don't publicize because you have to understand, okay, well, what's important to you, yeah. right? So yeah. when it comes to me making money, like, that may not be relevant. I mean, it's great for audience for inspiration, but I like to keep my personal life personal because that's what I'm doing it for. Yeah. And a lot of times people can mix both and get distracted from what's important. Yeah. So I allow, allow my work to take me to what's important. Um, now that she's good, though, it's all about me now. So I'm trying to figure <laughs> out where I'm about to buy my house. <laughs> so, I mean, have you, have you purchased anything nice for yourself? So yes, I actually own um, three rent- um, three rental properties. I own a duplex what? in Detroit. Okay. I okay. own two buildings in Ohio. One's five unit, and one is six unit, and I also co-own a salon suite in Atlanta with my business partner, India Monet. Are you serious? Yes. I mean, I... <laughs> Y'all see why? I mean, you see why she's the ha- one and a half of my CPA? Because she about to help me get right. You know what I'm saying? Of course. I love it. So let me ask you this question. What was one thing as, what motivated you to go this hard, this young? Let's be real. You're on the show. We keep it real. I don't sugarcoat nothing. You're young. You're beautiful. Are you married? No. Are you Are you dating? Ooh. So. <laughs> <laughs> Her like, oh, it's complicated. There. It's complicated. It's complicated. It's complicated. It's complicated. Okay, okay. Because most young, successful black ladies yourself are not really thinking about that. They're thinking about, no disrespect, queens, but, you know, they're thinking, all right, I'm educated, but let me find me a man mm-hmm. that can, you know, you know, at least help 
you know, take care of some things. Mm -hmm. And it seems like as a young millennial, actually, you're not even a millennial, are you? I, she's what, younger what than... What do I fall into? I think might, I am a millennial. Well, she might be on the cusp of it. She might you be are like, on the cusp. Yeah. You're on the very end of millennial. Yes, I'm not even going. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen. <laughs> <laughs> God. Um, and so I want to know what what what's the mindset that you had early on mm -hmm. to really get to where you are today? Yes. So really, it's okay. A lot of black women, like, you know, we, we're we queens, right? Right, right, right. Um, the thing about being a queen is that you have to control your kingdom. Oh. Mm. You know? And... Cut! That's it in the show! <laughs> <laughs> a lot of times, you know, people are looking for people to come and fix their kingdom. But as queens, we have capabilities to fix our own. So I watched my mom from, you know, when I was young make sure, even though she was a single mom who grew up in the Bronx, we never had to struggle, right? And I give her so much kudos for that because she was, wasn't was working jobs where she was making a lot of money, but she was making sure that we were always good. Mm. Um, so I saw her hustle. She was working at least two jobs at once. Um, I was I seen her go to school, take care of us, and then also work. So from a very young age, I already knew that I had no excuses, wow. right? You know, wow. my mom's out here. She can raise three kids and go to work and go to school and take care of the household and make sure... I ain't got no excuses. Mm -hmm. All I had to do, and she enforced that. The reason why I'm working hard, because your only job is to get an education and make good for yourself, right? So um, as I grew up and it came down to, like, you know, at this point in our lives where I'm able to do... The first do that I wanted to do was making sure that I would allow my mom to be alleviated from the duties of running the kingdom by herself. Wow. Mm -hmm. And that's who we are. So even with things like my little brothers, um, I have one brother who's 14, another one's 24, um, you know, was able to help my younger brother get a job. My brother who's 14 years old, you know, now that I got a little bit of money, my mom's biggest issues with him was him being focused in school, him being focused just outside of school. I put him in martial arts and I got us a tutor. You know, so like having money, that's why I'm so passionate about wealth building and saving money from your taxes because they say that money does not solve problems. It can solve a lot Absolutely. of things. Whoever said that is a lie. I'm mm -hmm. like, it don't make no sense because it solves 99.9% .9 of mine. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, I'll probably say it solves about 100%, but mm -hmm. it doesn't bring, doesn't, it doesn't bring joy. Exactly. Sure. And I think that's the Long part. Term. It definitely solves problems. For mm -hmm. sure. But it doesn't bring you joy. It doesn't bring you peace. It doesn't bring you that 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 joy that really God and, and, and pretty pretty much God can give you. Exactly. Yeah. And so I, I I definitely hear that. But if you got a you know a problem when it comes to paying your mortgage, I mean it's good you got joy. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 it's good that you love That's the Lord. It. Right. <laughs> but you still need some money. For sure. Very true. And so money is definitely, definitely important. Wow. No, yes. Give me some loss. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Right here. Like, <laughs> like, see, listen, Yo, I'm already... This is all new information to me, too. Like, Bro. Bro. I, I'm I knew private. she was amazing, but like... Oh, bro. At, bro. Incredible. I feel better. Yeah. Like, uh, I'm in good hands moving forward. My family's oh, no. in good hands. Yeah. I got you. And we, we, got we, you. we gonna announce towards the end too, but you know, you in good hands too. No, and that's not your woman. That, that's not his. You know, that's that's not his. No. He's happy. <laughs> you are married, right? I am happy. Yeah, happy yeah. married. You got kids? No kids, not No yet. kids yet? Not yet. Do, is kids in the future? Absolutely. Who is Michelle? You actually gave me a, a story that was emotional when we first met. Sure. And so tell the people, man, a little bit about yourself <laughs> and who you are. Yeah, so Michelle Valbrun, a.k.a. Money Making Mitch, yeah. certified public accountant, tax strategist, award-winning author. Really, for me, my story starts off in Florida, right? So my parents are Haitian. So they came to the United States really to give my sisters and I an opportunity to live the American dream, right? So with that, as you can imagine, having immigrant parents, they didn't know everything that there was about the United States, making money, mm -hmm. finances. So I had to do a lot of learning, self-education. And then growing up, you know, I experienced some hardships, honestly, right? So my father, actually, he owned a, a, a tax business in, mm. in Florida. Mm. But, you know, through that experience, one thing that happened with our family is that we were held at gunpoint. So they found out basically what he was doing was he kept a lot of his money that he was making in cash, for, which I'm going to explain why he did that. Okay, okay. Keep it in money shoeboxes. People found out about that, pulled up to our house, where I literally pulled me, my sisters, my grandmother was visiting, wow. my uncle literally laid us out on the floor and held us at gunpoint. Pretty much took the box, took the money, ran off with it. Come to find out, 
my father was avoiding taxes, right? He was doing what's called tax evasion, which we're going to get into. Mm -hmm. That's why he had the cash. So he ended up getting on house arrest, ended up going to jail. <laughs> he used to visit my father in jail. I remember this part. Yeah. I, well, I don't... Shit, I'm I got you. You know, the conversation, yeah. I don't go that deep. I got you. But, you know what I'm saying, uh, I had this experience that he ended up getting kicked out of the country. So around the age of 12, 13, my mother had to raise me and my two younger sisters. Pretty much did that. She did a phenomenal job because she was able to get... I was able to go to, you know, really great university. I went to the University of Florida. Learn about accounting. Learn That's about, all right. Right. Nah. <laughs> Wait, Univers what? UF? U U University of Florida. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, UF, okay. UF. UF, yeah, yeah. Gator. So, went yeah. to the, yeah, went to the University of Florida, got my uh, got my degree in accounting, okay. went on to become a CPA, worked for the, one of the largest accounting firms in the country. Okay. And then one interesting thing that happened was as I was learning and as I was getting into the tax code, whatever the case is, I was volunteering doing taxes for people, right? So, yeah. yeah doing this program called VITA, basically working with lower-income individuals to do their taxes. I'm going through a tax return, I'm learning, and I'm helping them out. They ended up owing some money, and one of the, the people that I was helping asked me, well, how can I save money proactively on taxes? Right, 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 right. And I didn't have an answer for him. I, like, froze. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Given, like, all the education that I, I went to in the University of Florida, one of the top accounting schools in the country. In the country, yeah. Yeah, period, yeah. right? So, always top ten. But... You know, what I learned from my personal experience, maybe, Shanae, you can attest to this, they don't necessarily go in-depth about business taxes and other high-level tax strategies that can really help you save money on taxes. It's really geared towards either helping you pass the CPA exam or working in corporate America. So with that, I have to do a lot of self-education, invested a ton of myself to really be able to get to the point where I am, where, you know, since my career, I've been able to help my clients save literally millions of dollars in taxes over their lifetime. So that's my story. Yo, fam, let's take a pause from today's show because I know you're probably sitting there at home, at work, uh, watching this on your iPad saying, yo, how is it that wealthy people can make so much money and pay so little in taxes? But hey, believe it or not, and you're gonna learn more about this in today's show as we continue, but believe it or not, you can do the same thing legally and ethically. And so what I wanted to do is make sure that you are aware of the freedom bundle that FOLA Financial has provided just for my tribe, only for the table, the AO squad. I want you to text the word TAXES, T-A-X-E-S, to 615-930-3431. And in return, we're going to send you this Freedom Bundle. Inside the Freedom Bundle, you're going to get the Tax Wealth 101 video course. You're also going to get an ebook on how to save $10,000 to up to $50,000 in taxes next year. Also, if you have a business, we're going to send you business business brackets, over 100 plus deductions that the average business owner is not aware of, of what they can deduct. Then also, this is a great part right here, what I love, if you do have a small business on the side, we're going to send you a tax write-off spreadsheet. Again, this is solely just for my tribe. And Follow Financial is giving y'all 60% off of this bundle. That's right. So text the word taxes to 615-930-3431. And let's get back over to today's show because these two are killing it. Now listen, y'all two are two human beings. Legit people. Good hearts. Good souls. And you all are just, I mean, I love this. You're not coming to the table bougie. Like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? This is who I am. Like, y'all y'all get people. Mm. I think that's one thing I like about y'all. Y'all y'all get people. So let, let's get into it. Because the people are saying, all right, cool, great people. But can we get some, can we get some knowledge? Right. <laughs> I got you. I feel you. I feel you. Like, all right, cool people. She did this for her mama. He almost got shot. Okay, I got you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What's, okay, what's, can, can you help me with my taxes? Right. Um, why do you why do you both think that understanding taxes is the biggest return on our investments and on building wealth? And honestly, is understanding taxes very crucial to building wealth? For sure. Can I kick it off? No. I'm like, I had to ask permission from the queen. I'm gonna hey, I'm 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 set up the alley -oop real quick. But basically, okay. the way this is the thing about it, right? So we talk about expenses. Okay. And this is with everyone. I'm not talking about just business owners, investors, everyone. You have expenses in your life. Car notes, yeah. mortgage, yep. children, yeah. debt, right? We know children are definitely right. expensive. Right. <laughs> expensive, right? 
And a lot of people think those things are, when, when I ask people, like, what's the biggest expense that you have, they, they name those things. But when you really break it down, taxes are literally your single largest expense. Yes. And you got to think about this, right? When you pay, when you, when you make money, you pay income tax. Yes. When you pay for something, you pay sales tax. Yes. When you buy property, you pay property tax. Yes. When you sell the property for more than what you pay for it, <laughs> you pay capital <laughs> gains tax. Right. When you die, yeah. right, someone could potentially be paying estate tax. Right, right. So when you add up all those taxes together without a proper tax plan or a tax strategy and tax knowledge, that comes out to close to 50%, maybe even more of your income. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of money, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's really not how much you earn, it's how much you keep. Absolutely. And if you have nothing to keep, you have nothing to pass down. Mm. So that's, that's a major key in building wealth. But even despite all those taxes I mentioned, the biggest tax of them all is ignorance tax. Ignorant tax. Ignorance tax. Correct me, right? Ignorance. Ignorance tax, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you anyway, so shy to say it, though? I mean, right. <laughs> ignorance tax. I have but never heard that. It's listen, and the, and the ignorance tax, right? <laughs> and ignorance tax is the tax that you pay. And I, when I say ignorance, get this clear. I don't mean that in a rude or condescending way. When you look at the word ignorance, it means a lack of knowledge, lack of information. So ignorance tax is the tax that you pay by either not understanding the tax code, by missing out on different tax deductions, by doing shady things, unfortunately, my, my, my dad was doing right, which yeah. could lead to jail time, fines, penalties, et cetera, right? Yeah. So understanding the tax code is extremely important. I always like to kick it off the discussion that way mm -hmm. to understand, and that could lead to you, ultimately what's gonna end up happening is you overpaying in taxes, right? A lot of people, don't realize what's out there as far as tax savings are concerned. So that ignorance tax is the difference that you're paying, right? So sometimes, depending on the type of tax professional that you're working with, people may see that as a cost. Yeah. Yeah. But the cost is really what you're going to end up giving the government more money than you should have, right? We want to make sure we pay the government, right? The, right. the, the purpose of taxes is to increase revenue so we can take care of the society and the community, whatever the case is, so we want to pay our fair share, right. but you don't have to give them a tip. You don't got to pay them extra. You feel me? So that's, that was me, but I'm going to hand it off. Listen, we ain't tipping so Uncle Sam. Hey, I'm, I'm with you. Off. I don't want to tip him. I want right. to pay Uncle Sam when I have to pay him. Right. He don't get no tip because he ain't working hard. Exactly. He ain't knowing that he's just sitting right there. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, I mean, just to, to piggyback off of what Michelle, you know, so greatly explains um, the tax code. Once you do have knowledge of it, you have that power. I say knowledge is power, yeah. and that's even that holds true even with the tax code. Yeah. Because once you understand that the tax code was created as also a blueprint to wealth building, mm. right? There's no there's no um, magical reason why you get good tax rewards for doing good things for yourself. Right? You start a business, you can open up a, at least a 600 plus tax deductions. You know, you purchase a home, you can now write off your mortgage interest, your real estate taxes, right? Um, if you, you know, have a kid, you now get deductions for that. Things that contribute to you and your well being, um, retirement savings included as well, you typically are going to get tax credits or tax deductions for. Yeah. A lot of people who complain about the tax code not being in their favor. Well, ask them to take a look at, at themselves. Well, what are you doing to put yourself in a more favorable tax benefit, right? Mm. Good. Yeah. So stop complaining. Just put yourself in, in, in position. Exactly. All right, so let's go there. Let's go there. How do we do that? Because you have, um, I'll say about 60 70% of my tribe are 9 to fivers who are doing hobbies on the side, but they're not a business. Mm -hmm. You know, then you have a lot of my tribe members who are... They have a nine to five full job, W two employees, but they are legit businesses. So let's talk to that nine to five. What are some key things that they could be doing right now? Just W two employees mm -hmm. uh, to save money on taxes. Yeah, I'll I'll start real quick with this too. So this concept, real quick, from Rich Dad Poor Dad Robert Kiyosaki talks about the cash flow quadrant, right? The four mm -hmm. ways you can make money: okay. you can make money as an employee, yeah. self employed individual, business owner, and investor, right? Okay. The majority of the tax code favors individuals on the business owner investor side okay. versus the employee and self-employed, and most of the wealth is created on that right side of the quadrant, right? Right. But as far as employees are concerned, as Shania put, the tax code favors specific behavior that either benefits you, but I'm going to caveat, I think it really just favors the government because they know that it increases the wealth in the country, yep. so they're able to get more tax revenue. Oh. So 
But if we're talking about the nine to fiver, yeah. there's a few things, right? There's there's six big ways for you to save money on taxes, right? The first one is maximizing deductions. Okay, well, you say that maximizing deductions. What does that mean? Because I, I hear that. <laughs> yeah. So that means you need to go up. When I say maximizing deductions, making sure that you're properly deducting the things that you're able to deduct. So a deduction is basically, let's say you make $1,000. Right. A deduction is an expense money that you're spending okay. that the IRS allows you to to be able to write off is what, when people say deductions, okay. that's what a write-off is. Okay. You All make $1,000. You spend $300 on something that the government says you can, you can write off, right? Right, right? Specifically mortgage interest. You reduce that, now you're at $700. They're okay. looking at that $700 to determine your tax rate, and then you're going to get hit with your marginal tax rate, well, the different progressive tax rates or whatever, but just yeah. to keep the math simple, yeah. let's say it's 30%, right. that's 700 Right. Now you're at uh, 210 on taxes. So that's that's the way it goes. That's the breakdown. Got you. So nine to fivers, you can look into doing what are called itemized deductions. Okay. So there's different categories for that. There's some related to your home. When, as I mentioned, mortgage interest payments, you got property taxes. There's things related to medical and dental expenses. Okay. Yep. yep right. You yep. got things related to charity. Yep. As charity, well. Church. Et cetera. Yep. yep. Tithe. Stuff like yep. that. Yep. So those are some of the categories as far as the itemized deductions are concerned. Okay. Then um, for nine to fivers, you have retirement. That's going to be a key way for you to save money on taxes as well. Okay. okay. Nine to fivers, usually you're going to have an option to be able to put money into a traditional 401k. Yeah. Basically, retirement account. We all know that's a good thing to put your money in. Absolutely. You want to make sure you can maximize it if 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 you're looking to build your retirement that way. Yeah. And put and do what's called a pre-tax contribution. So basically, before the money comes into your pocket. It automatically gets deducted from your paycheck and goes into that retirement account, and that's going to give you a deduction there. So as far as nine to fivers are concerned, those are probably the two big ways to save. You got anything else? I mean, aside of that, it's okay. You know, turn your hobby into a business, Ooh. right? Because the hobby expenses are only going to be deductible up into that hobby income. Ooh. And the thing about on earning income ordinarily, which is through your W-2, um, when you have a business, it's also considered ordinary income. Okay. And then when your income categories match, you can use one to offset the other. So you can earn ordinary income from your 9 to 5 through your W-2 um, and have some, you know, ordinary losses from your business that can now offset your ordinary income from your W-2. So even though you had excess taxes withheld from your pay stubs throughout the year, when it comes down to file your taxes and you put your W-2 on that tax return, once you complete your Schedule C for your small business with those expenses, those expenses are now eating at the ordinary income you earn from your job, thus lowering your overall taxable income, therefore either increasing your tax refunds or lowering your tax liability. Mm. <laughs> Michelle and Shania, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Nine to fivers. If you all are not listening right now, you all need to be listening. I think about 50% of you all right now have a hobby on the side. And you haven't taken the opportunity to start an LLC, mm -hmm. a legit business on the side. I know this answer, but I want the experts to say it. How hard is it to start a legit business? Oh, not hard. It's not I'll, give, I'll, give, I'll give you a real life example, right? Yeah, yeah. My wife. Yeah. Loves wine. Loves wine. Loves wine. Okay. Loves champagne. Well, I like your wife. Yeah. <laughs> 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 right. like, I like your wife, That's brother. Okay. Yeah. And she she like, liquor, wine. boy. Right. Okay. <laughs> no, but specific liquors. Wine, the, the, the you know, the, yeah, the more yeah. sophisticated spirits. I got you. I got you. Right? Right. So the wine. She's a little bougie. Okay. She's a little bougie, right? <laughs> and she actually became, and because of her passion with wine, mm -hmm. What she did was, okay, I love wine. How can I create a business centered around something I love and, and do something? I'm already doing it. I'm mm -hmm. already drinking wine. Mm -hmm. I'm always, already traveling and going to different vineyards and stuff like that, doing wine tastings. Mm -hmm. What can I do? So what she did was she started her career in a, there was a network marketing company that sold wines. Mm -hmm. And she was doing, and, she was, and with that company, they were also doing in-home wine tastings. Gotcha. So she was doing in-home wine tastings. That was her business. She was generating revenue. They would pay her. She'd wow. come inside the house. They'll talk about the taste, the smells, the smell, all of that stuff, right? Wow. And she was able to do something that she loves, and she also loves people. Okay. And she loves, she loves hosting events. Yeah, yeah. So she was able to do that and turn that into a business. 
And now she, what she's doing now is different wine experiences, right? We had her, we just did an event in Atlanta. She came and did like a whole champagne brunch and taught people about the the bubbles. And then she ultimately, and this is, and this, she's an overachiever, right? My wife has like a hundred certifications. She's always studying. She's always become. She's always become. She's really big on getting certified in something. She became what's called a sommelier. Sommelier. What's that? That's a wine expert. That's like oh, the creme okay. de la, That's like I the CPA. You. That's the CPA wine person. Yeah, I got you. Essentially, I got you. you know what I, I mean. Got you. I got you. So that's like the CPA equivalent of of a wine expert. But she basically went through a process to show and prove that she's knowledgeable about wine. She could taste wines and know what region it came from, etc. That's. But that now that's a legitimate business, right? She's she's gonna host an event uh, this weekend at a cabin, wine experiences with people doing something that she loves, and she's making money, and it's a legitimate business because one of the one of the things in the tax code is say they say that um, basically if you are in the pursuit of income, pursuit of profit, right? Really, the pursuit of profit, right? You want to you want to make sure you're profitable. I mean, you can you can sustain losses for. A few years, right? Right, no more than three years. I would say within the five-year period, right? So you don't get that those losses disallowed, right? But if you are legitimately in the pursuit of profit, which she is, because she's always looking at her expenses, mm -hmm. she's like, "This is expensive. I'm not going to do that." Bye -bye. Right? Okay. <laughs> then you can legitimately become a business, and then obviously there's different protocols to make sure you make the business even more properly structured and protected, like getting a limited liability, etc. So. So literally, we just call it like, turning your passion into profits, right? Yeah, yeah. Even if you do have a nine to five, like what else are you passionate about? Yeah. You know, if, if you like to walk dogs, mm -hmm. if you just have dogs and you walk, well, why not walk your friend's dog for, you know, a, a good price? Yeah. Um, but now being able, since you are a dog walker, you can deduct expenses related to even taking care of your dog. Right. Because everybody always want to ask, well, how can I write off my dog? That's one way, right? Turn that into another business. So now your dog is an expense, or you can, you know, have your dog model for your business. Whoa, whoa, you can have your dog be a mascot for whoa, your whoa, business. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I, got a, I got a beautiful dog. <laughs> You're trying to tell me I can I can have her model for my business, and I can write off her expense? Of course. So again, imagine if your dog is a mascot for your business, right? Now your grooming, that's going to be a deduction. If you have to feed your dog to be on set that day, that can now be a deduction as well. God! Oh my! <laughs> Raven cost me a lot of money. No, shut up, I'm about head. to put her to work. <laughs> hey, look at here. Same right here. Same right. Hey, hey, model for the company. Good. Yes, exactly. Grooming just paid for. Yes. Food just paid for. Yes. A lot of my influencer clients that are on YouTube, I'm like, look, son, throw your dog in our video. Because now your dog is a part of your brand. So just like we can deduct a lot of your expenses because you are an influencer, well, guess who's your sidekick now? What? Doggy. Wow. I'm about to put Raven in the set. <laughs> set. Set. Yes. Seriously. See, this this is the type of information we need we need to know. Yes. Because it's like it's not about getting over, but it's about capitalizing on everything that we can yes, do. Yeah, it's capitalizing off of knowledge because the knowledge is there, right? So it's like it's not like you're doing a disservice to everyone else by doing this. You're doing a justice to yourself. Yeah, and we yeah. all should all be thinking about how can I put myself first? And that's about putting more money back in your pocket so that you can invest into your future. Yeah. Well, let's be smart about how we look at the knowledge that's present in the tax code and use it to our advantage. Now, this is black excellence. That's this, you see, this is why we team. Yeah, man. I, I can't do it with the fettuccine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she can't do it with the sauce. The sauce. The sauce. The sauce. The sauce. The sauce. That's what's up, man. And a little party thing. You're right. Capitalizing what he was saying, this is what we're going to do. Right after right. the dog. What? And, but listen, I would say this, and, and the foundation piece of it is this, right? So as she was mentioning, this person has a legitimate business, business. So that's number one. OK. Now, to be able to write things off, deduct things for your business, is four requirements. I call those the tax-free deductions. OK, wait, wait. Say that one more time. Yeah. All right. Tax-free deductions. deductions. Yes. And there's four requirements for that. Four requirements what that the IRS those? has. And it's an acronym, so it's going to be free. F-R-E-E. Okay. F-R-E-E. -E. The All first right. part of that is F. Yep. It needs to be for your trade, business, or profession. For your trade, business, or profession. Yes. Okay. If the expense relates to your trade, business, or profession, that's requirement number one. So, okay. you need, again, you need to have that trade, business, or profession. Okay. Okay. Number two, it needs to be considered regular for that business. Okay. Regular is going to be ordinary for that business. So, like, if you're a photographer, writing off a camera is right. regular. Exactly. exactly. Okay. That okay. is ordinary for your business. All right. For my business, writing off a dog, 
Not regular. Not regular. <laughs> not regular, but depending on if I can legitimately show how it's going to generate revenue profits for my business, then possibly. But we have a lot of social media influencers mm -hmm. who are doing that. So they model, they, you know, promote maybe different, they get paid to promote different merchandise out there on social media. So they can have their dog in there to help promote that merchandise. So that is regular. Am I right? Possibly, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, again, with, with the IRS, it's all up. It's not only about um, what happens. It's about how concrete can you stand on your position? I got you. Right? Because, it's law. you know, when you have really good CPAs on your team, wink, wink, uh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. your CPA is able to, depending upon your business, and this is why we like to know our clients, because there are certain things that we can pull in. If I can defend that for you as an expense, because I can say, like, okay, you're a CPA, you got a dog. Well, you know, how about... Is your dog in your in your commercials? Is your dog a part of your branding? Ooh, is your dog mm -hmm. um, walking around with your logo on his back? People mm -hmm. love dogs. They love yeah. to pet dogs and say, oh my God, so yeah. cute. Well, guess what? Also follow, follow financial. Ooh. Now I'm using, you know, that dog as a part of my marketing. It can fit into my marketing budget. Okay. So again, having good CPAs on your team who can be able to use a tax code to defend you, because um, you can tell them, like, hey, listen, I bought this. Honestly, for most things that my clients tell me, I could figure out a way to write it off. Right? From almost everything. Because especially in this new age of entrepreneurship, we're not only building businesses, we're correspondingly building personal brands. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So we also look at, okay, well, what are some things you, you're doing to um, entice or make your personal brand a lot more monetizable? Because yeah. those things can also contribute to you having more tax deductions as well. Mm. All right. That's fire. F R E. First E. 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 Yeah. So the first E. And going and alluding to her point, right? So when we talk about taxes, at the end of the day, tax is law. Okay. So really, you're going to, in the event that you get audited, if you could defend your position and explain how you fit into these requirements, yeah. then you have a better chance of winning the case. And this is the thing, too. The tax code is actually intentionally... They, they, it's a lot of gray area, right? Because they want you to make the decision because yeah. it's going to be case by case. So you want to make sure you talk to your CPA professional. To make sure. Or us. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to make sure. Yeah, yeah, we're going to yeah. drop their information, y'all. Don't get it twisted, all right? In order to, to make sure that you're on point. So F-R-E. So the first the set, the first E is going to be essential. Essential. So it needs to be considered essential to your business. The IRS, call, the IRS calls that necessary. Yep. So necessary expenses are going to be advertising, you paying for flights, flights staff, business meals, et cetera, anything that you're doing to essentially be able to create profit okay. and income for your business. And last but not least, Super key again. A lot of judgment is going to be based on this. Mm -hmm. Economical. Economical. Mm -hmm. Economical. Okay. Economical. The IRS calls that not lavish or extravagant under the circumstances. Okay. So again, says a lot, but doesn't really mean a lot, right? Right, right. So what specifically they're alluding to is looking at how much money your business is making. Yep. And what kind of expenses you're using, and would that be lavish, right? For someone who is a multimillionaire, yeah, like Grant Cardone, right? Grant Cardone talks about writing off his jet. jet. Mm -hmm. That talks costs about, like thirteen million dollars, mm -hmm. right? Talks about writing off vehicles. Does all these different things. He has multi multi millionaires. Right, I mean, right. he has multi multi millions. Right, right, right. He could easily justify that, right? If you're just starting off in business, even if you have jet money, and it's just gonna zero you out. That's you know, not a wise that's, move. That's that's that might be seen as like okay, what it. Why do you need a jet? Yeah, you, right you, now? you just got you just, you just made five hundred thousand. How are you trying to right. make payments on a jet or whatever yes, the case okay. is? That looks crazy. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So okay. you want to you want to make it make sense. So that's right, really right. that's really what that means. Make it make sense. Yes. Okay. We talk about riding off the G wagon, all these different vehicles. Yeah. You want to make sure you can make you make substantially more to be able to justify that expense. Mm -hmm. Yes. So maybe that might not be something that you could do on year one if you're only making fifty thousand. Mm -hmm. Right. Cool. So, cool. so let, let, let's go there because I wrote this question down. Because I, I mean, I specifically was like, all right, let me let me uh, let me write this stuff down. Mm -hmm. um, for business owners now, let me ask this question first: How much does it cost to get a legit LLC started? So, really, the cost to get started really depends on your state. Okay. Um, the balance per state will differ. Okay. Um, so, for example, a state like Michigan, starting an LLC may just be fifty dollars. In the state of New York, that's two hundred fifty dollars. State of California, you're looking at eight hundred dollars, right? Eight hundred dollars. What's the largest one? I'm curious. Um, I feel like California, mixed with Delaware, mixed with Texas, are like the highest states for LLC formation. What cost. about right at eight hundred to a thousand? 
Yeah, so the thing about California is even though you're you're paying one fee to incorporate your LLC, you're also gonna be liable to pay franchise tax. No matter mm -hmm. if you make zero dollars, that franchise tax has a minimum. So it's very expensive there. Okay. Um, so some states, though they have low LLC formation costs, yeah. you wanna make sure that you thoroughly understand all the costs that you are going to incur when you're operating the business. Because filing is just one thing. Again, your state may have annual filing requirements, your state may have franchise tax, um, but essentially on average, I would say $200, if you take all 50 states and aggregate, okay. I would say $50, um, $200. And you can do the LLC process yourself if yeah. you are going to be somebody who's gonna read, right? Mm -hmm. so people love saying, hey, start your LLC by yourself, get your EIN by yourself, and people, then they come to me and I gotta fix what happened because forming an LLC, that's just one business type. There's this couple of others that right. you can also choose from. Right. That LLC may not be right for your business. So if you didn't make the right entity choice in the beginning, it can cost you later on. Ooh. So though you can file it yourself, you still always want to consult with the CPA or an attorney to yeah. figure out whether that entity structure is proper for your line of business. Because yeah. mm -hmm. if you're trying to start a biotech company, having an LLC is not going to give you the protection that you need in that specific industry. Okay. You know, um, so you definitely want to make sure even if you are starting a company and your future goal is to sell it, well, sell it, investors typically are looking for C-Corps. So that may be your ideal structure in the beginning. Okay. So though you can do it yourself, you at least want to make sure you understand what you're doing. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Because, again, that's going to lead into the creation of having ignorance tax be your biz biggest ignorance offense. Ignorance tax. Ignorance yep. tax. Well, you talking something Because right? <laughs> I'm probably been guilty of that. Oh, no, listen. That's literally... This is the thing about it, right? So one of the things I do is I talk to several business owners, individuals. Yeah. And that is very consistent. Yeah. There's... Legitimately, everyone I speak to, there is something that I can show them and teach them as it relates to saving more money on taxes. So it's, and this is the thing about it, there's over 74,508 pages in the tax code. If you were to print it out, it, it, I mean, this book is like, wow. and that, and this number is taken back in 2011. Wow. And then imagine, so we had all the different changes related to COVID yeah. and, uh, and the, the, the changes CARES and Act. the CARES Act, the, all of that stuff, right? Yeah. And now Biden's looking to make some significant changes to the tax code in the future, right? Proposed tax changes, which are probably going to pass because yeah. the House and the Senate have are both Democrat, right? Right, right. That's, so that's probably going to slide through. Yeah. So, yes, it, it is complex. Albert Einstein said the hardest thing in the world to understand is income tax. Is income mm -hmm. tax. He quoted, he's quoted saying that. So Albert because, Einstein. Yeah, Albert Einstein. <laughs> literally the, the genius of the history, right? Yeah. Quote, unquote, yeah. this guy. He said that, right? Because sometimes sometimes it's it makes sense, other times it's just based on sp specific reasons that they had intentions, right? So, to, so people who are in position could save money on things that they want to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And these people in positions have businesses, they're investors, they're doing all these things like, okay, let's try to get some some things or put some things in the in the code to allow us to save money, but um taking a step back because Shanann went all the way, like, she went, she went there, yeah, right? she went there. She went all the way to Pluto that's, with it. That's I was like, she, yeah, she's, God. listen, the goal, right? Listen. She went all the way to Pluto. I'm, I'm going to take it back to Mars a little bit. I'm going to bring, okay. I'm gonna bring it down. We're close to the Earth now. Yeah, yeah, we, 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 <laughs> I'm, I'm going to take it step, yeah, step, step, step number two. Yeah. So, talking about LLC's business structure, whatever the case is. Yeah. One thing that people need to understand when they, they start a business is this. So you can start a business with your social security number. Not recommended. Okay. I'm just letting you know it's right. possible. So that's so you can be in business. You can literally be in business. You can be in business today. Right now. Yeah. So I, I sell and make money. Hey. And um, have legit write-offs. Yep. Yep, and have legit write-offs. With no LOC, no, no C Corp. No, so you have no, no protection. Yeah, no protection, exactly, but you are still in business. In business. Yep. And I'm getting to that protection piece. So that's right. what the, that's where the LLC comes in place. But it is not required to be in business. Okay. So just want to let people know that. Yeah. You can sell something on eBay and be able to write things off. Okay. That's number one. You're in the pursuit of profit, pursuit of making money. Yeah. So one of the things that you want to do to protect yourself and your identity is to have an EIN employer identification number. That's like the social security for the business. Business, yep, 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 yep. Right? So that's one thing that you can do. But then even before that, you want to look into having what are called legal entities. Legal entities 
Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm, breaking I, it down. I gotta I'm break the it down. finance guy, boy. All these firms are coming out. Hold on, hold on. Can you break it down? So, what are legal entities? Right. Yeah, let me, let me, I'm, I'm like, breaking it down. I'm, no, no, I'm breaking it down. I talked to her for about an hour. I don't remember. Her. She, she no. didn't tell me this. No, no, no. Listen, because she, I'm telling you, she goes to Pluto. She's like, her mind is, she's, she's a. Yeah, she's a beast. She's a beast. Thank you. So, but legal entities. So, legal entities are entities that you have that are registered with your, with your state usually, right? Okay. They provide legal protection depending on the entity type for your business. There's four legal entities. You could be you could be a sole proprietorship. Yep. That doesn't provide any legal protection. And that's pretty much you just going in business without any right. business Right, so if you sell like a cupcake you from your home, about this. if you are, you know, printing t-shirts from your home just for fun, but you're selling them, you are a sole proprietor, sole proprietor. by default. Yes. By default, that's the default setting. So there's escort. There's that's all oh, you're jumping ahead. That's like that's <laughs> not now we now you're getting into Jupiter. Let me oh, let, let me just give it. Let me Y'all the professional. I'm getting no no I'm getting yeah. there. No no no. But you, no you're right though. Yeah, I'm yeah. just I just want to I want to make sure that people get yeah yeah get all of it yeah um so to make sure everyone's following along. So we got and I know we're going deep with it. This but is good I, stuff. But, but I want but I want them to really get this. Get it. To yeah. me this is like the most important and not talked about often. So I want to acknowledge you yes. for having this on. So thank mm -hmm. you for this. Yes. this is, I want people to get this. Yes. We got sole proprietorship. Now you got partnerships, right? Okay. Okay. When one or more people get together, possibly, right? That's not possible. <laughs> that, that's a done deal. Right. That, I told the people they are partners, y'all. Right. It's, 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 it's new news. Right. Then that's 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 one or more person that's considered a partnership. Okay. Now you have what's called the uh, LLC, Limited Liability Company. Okay. LLC. And LLCs are bomb, and I'm going to tell you why they're bomb okay. in a minute. Then you have corporations. So these are the four legal entities. So, so proprietorship, partnership, partner, LLC. LLC, corporation. LLCs and corporations, they provide that legal protection. Yes. Legal protection means in the event that your business gets sued. Yes. Then your personal assets are protected. Are protected. It's separated. It's a separate entity. It's like a separate mm -hmm. person. Yeah. They can't come. They yeah. try to come at you, Ailes. But you got. Yeah. But you, they can't come after okay. the LLC or corporation. Ah. Uh, so it's right? two different entities. It's exactly. two different entities. Okay. Right. And there's different rules and requirements in order to maintain that. One of the big things is making sure that's keeping your personal and business separated. Okay. Is one of those key requirements. A whole bunch of requirements to make sure you get with your. Yeah, legal, legal protection on that, right? Okay. That and that's that's state law. Yeah. But the LLC, what one of the dope? Well, let me let me. I'll talk about the LLC in a minute. Okay. Now you have what are called tax entities. Okay. Okay. Tax entities are actually how you're taxed. Okay. Okay. And this is the funny thing, a lot of tax professionals don't even understand that concept. Mm -hmm. Wait, wait, wait. So people <laughs> who do what y'all do don't understand that concept. They don't. So no. just to emphasize what he said. If there's a difference between your legal entity and your tax entity. Uh -huh. Because a lot of these legal entities can actually have several ways that they can be taxed. Yep. <sighs> yeah. This is why they, they, they work for me. I just want to say <laughs> <laughs> now, they ain't cheap. I ain't gonna sit here in front with y'all. Well, boy, they, oh boy, I feel good, boy. I feel good. Like, I'm all right. Yeah. <laughs> if, she, if she say yes, if he say yes, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> if y'all say no, I'm like, okay, better not do that one. Because right. listen, we gon' we make sure that, you know, with the clients that we work with, you know, if we can do it, we're gonna do it. Right. right? right. If we can't do it, because we're in this for the long term, again, yes. it's yes. not worth it here. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, we're in yeah. it for the long game. Cause we can't do it now. Right. We'll figure out what to do in the future though. Right, right. 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 You know, so just right. be patient, especially when you're with working with like laws. Um, know that, you know, certain things may not come to fly, but when you're working with good people, they're, they'll do up until, up to what they can legally and ethi ethically. Yeah. And outside of that, like, you know, if we can't do it now, we can figure out a way that we can do it in the future. Yo, what's going on, fam? Real quick so we can get back to today's show. Listen, we have a brand new home. Yes, so we not just have YouTube, but I've also created a Patreon community. So you and I can connect better. Now, I know I am extremely late to the Patreon game, but here's why. Trust, loyalty, and depth. You see, I value our relationship, and I want to make sure that I created a community that can help you get closer to your goals. 
So in this community, you guys, we're gonna be able to chat more one-on-one. -on -one. I'm gonna be doing live streams only in Patreon, only on Patreon. I also created a brand new show called The Table Uncut. It's only 20, 25 minutes, but I bring people to the table, uncut with wine, with some little bourbon, and we're having an honest conversation about life. What are some things that we're doing? It's unscripted and it's real, raw, and relevant. Not only is that, I've also created a private group to where you all would get actually access to some of my new products coming up, some of the events I'm going to speak in at. You can get into those for free. So listen, I'm going to drop the Patreon community link in today's show notes. I want you to go check it out. Come join the community. Come join the family. I'm cutting it off at a certain number so the first few people to get over there can be a part of this community. It's your boy Ayo, and I approve this message. Let's get back to today's show. Yo, if y'all just now tuning in, welcome back to the table. It's your boy <laughs> Anthony O'Neill, man. And I am at the table with two, I want to say gurus. I mean, I think these two individuals um, are taking over um, the, the tax world, the building wealth world. I mean, the wealth of information we have received thus far, and we haven't really talked about really business owners yet. And I'm sitting here like, what? <laughs> Ignorance tax? <laughs> what? <laughs> but before we get back into the show, you guys, I want to make sure also a, a good part of building wealth um, is making sure you have a solid savings account. Making sure that you have uh, an emergency savings account at least three to six months so that way if something does happen, um, you have somewhere to go to pull this up, and you don't have to get back into debt because one of the key things, y'all know me, is my show. Uh, to build wealth, you got to eliminate your debt, okay? I'm cool with a mortgage payment, but you shouldn't be having all this other, other kind of debt. Mm -hmm. So I teach having three to six months uh, set aside for your emergency. I park my emergency fund at Prize Pool. Once you go over to Prize Pool um, and check them out, they are 100% fee. And th check this out, they're giving you 0.30% interest rate. Now, that's not a lot of money, but it's 7.5 times higher than the average bank account out there. And it's right there on your app. And what I love about Prize Pool is they're actually making it a little fun. So if you just park your money in there, let's say you have $10,000 sitting there, well, every single month, you'll get 10,000 tickets and they're drawing for $10,000 every single month. And every single week, they're giving away thousands of dollars. So you might be able to get not just a 0.30%, but you may walk away with $10,000 just because your money is sitting right there. So it's going to sit there anyways. Why not see if you can get some more money for it? So hit the, uh, hit the link in my show description. Check that out. Join me over at Prize Pool. Let's get back to uh, this conversation on how do we get this bag, keep the bag, and make more bags. That probably was improper grammar. We're going to let that slide. Yeah, how it's, do the the yeah, it's the Urban yeah, Dictionary. It's the Urban Dictionary. Let me call. say it again. How do we get the bag, keep the bag, and then flip that bag? There we ah, go. Ba, ba, ba. I felt the Lord on that one. I felt the Lord on that one. All right, so this is what I'm going to do, y'all. Um, Drop your business name in the show, not the show notes, in the um, comments below. If you're on and listening to this on podcast, jump over to YouTube, go over to my YouTube channel. What I want you to do, if you are a nine to five person with a hobby and you want to start a business, I want you to put the name of your business and give me one or two sentences of what the business will do, all right? And I'm going to choose one person, no matter what state you're in, and I'm going to pay. I'm going to pay you, all right? I'm going to pay you to get your LLC started. Oh, Man. Wow. One person, one okay. person. And then wow. check this out, check this out, check this out, check this out. I'm not even done yet uh, because I love you and I want to help my tribe win. Not only would I pay for LLC, but I'm going to pay for one hour just one hour, because they're expensive, to sit down <laughs> with my CPAs to at least help you get started and answer some of your questions up front. So all you got to do is go in the comments on YouTube. Tell me your, the name of your company you want to start. What is it that you're going to be doing? All right? And then I'm going to choose one. I'm going to have my team member just choose one, whatever's a good, good one, a creative one. I don't know how we're going to do it because I believe every business is a good and needed business. Mm -hmm. So no, no business is better than the next. But um, we'll choose one. And so not only, not only will you get your LLC funded by me, but I'm also going to pay you one hour to sit down. Have y'all named y'all's partnership yet? So the business name is 
is Fola Financial. What's that again? Fola Financial. Yes. Yeah. No. <laughs> so I can also explain like what FOLA means. Yeah, what's right? it mean? Um, so when I was creating, um, figuring out names to, to name the business, yeah. you know, I'm very proud of my roots and where I came from, and especially being in finance, where as they know, it's pretty much, you know, white male dominated industry. I'm a black woman, so I'm the opposite of what people are expecting to see when they see a CPA. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to make sure that when they were doing business with us. The name has some significance and yeah. specifically cultural significance. Come on. So Fola is actually a Yoruba Nigerian heritage name. It means honor and wealth. Ooh. Um, and bring in Michelle, you know, and that's partner is perfect because him and I both value integrity. Yeah. yeah. Right? And yeah. so being honorable, having integrity, but then also the fact that again we're here to help you build wealth. Mm. Not only build that wealth. But keep that wealth, sustain that wealth, grow that wealth through mm. not overpaying Uncle Sam. Good God, boy, I love it. Yeah, it's. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm sitting here like I'm just real talk, and I joke a lot on my show, and I get a lot on my show. But real talk, it just sitting across the table from two black people who are who have character, who have integrity, mm -hmm. and who want to help people build true wealth legally. Who you you all want to help us understand? how to properly use the tax code in our benefit. For sure. And you're black. Mm. Black and proud. Exactly. <laughs> and, and, and here's the thing. Y'all are knowledgeable. You don't just help people file the taxes. No, you take that so much deeper. Yeah. That, and and that's, that's what I love. For sure. All right. All right. So <laughs> let's get to this because a lot of people are business owners. All right. All right. Get to me. Get to me. So for business owners, how should we properly structure our businesses yeah. to protect our profits and assets? So, prime example, how do we pay children through our businesses? Mm. One of my homegirl in Atlanta, um, you met her, um, uh, Bougie Banker. Yes. She pays her daughter. Raquel. Raquel, mm -hmm. right. She pays her daughter, and she's able to write off that money and also pay her daughter. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how do our people be able to do that legally and ethically? And then, two, we got to go down. Uh, you know what I'm saying? We got to go there. We we sat down and we talked about this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we got to go there. Uh, 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 she, 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 she got me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but let's, let's talk about it because people are, are excited. And, and I learned something that you can write off a Mercedes G-Wagon. Screw, screw. Uh, <laughs> that Grant Cardone wrote off his jet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Let's get to work. How, how do we... How, <laughs> what is this? How do we do this legally and ethically? Yeah, there's... And there, there's so many concepts and questions that you brought in there. I'm going to touch business, and I'm going to get through the business structure real quick. Yeah, yeah. Get to the children, and I'm going to let my sis talk about the G-Wagon joint. Okay. <laughs> joint thing. Yeah, yeah. Item. Yeah. All right, so tax entities, and this is going to help with the, the how do you structure the business piece. Yeah, yeah. So you tax, you could be taxed in four ways: sole proprietorship, partnership, S corp. This is where the S corp comes in, or C corporation. Okay. Okay. Now with that sole proprietorship, that's the default for an LLC. If okay. you're a single person. Yep. With the sole proprietorship, you're going to pay 15.3 percent in taxes. 15.3 percent in taxes. Yep, on the profit of the business. That 15.3 yeah. percent, Social Security, Medicare, etc. So that's as if you were, if you're working a nine to five, nine to fivers. Yep. You're paying 7.65 percent. Your employer's paying 7.65 percent. Now your employer, employee, yep. essentially, they're going to want to collect all that on the profit of the business. Okay. It's cool. Yeah. If 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 you're just starting off. Right. But now, if your business makes more substantially more in profit. That number is going to, as you can imagine, get bigger and bigger and bigger. Right. So one of the strategies that you can look into, right, to save money on the on self-employment taxes, what that 15.3 is, is to make and switch over to an S-corporation, make what's called an S-corp election. Yeah, yeah. Because what happens is now instead of paying 15.3% on the profit of the business, yeah. you're not paying that on the salary that you're paying yourself, reasonable compensation. So you have to figure out how much you want to pay yourself. So that's going to be something to consider if you want to, if you're making more, at least more than $50,000 in profit, right? More than how much? 50000 Okay. And profit. then, so we get this straight. If you're making, if you have an LLC sold um, and you're making less than 50000 mm -hmm. profit, which is net, yep. mm -hmm. uh, then you'll be paying 15.3% in addition to your ordinary income. In addition to the ordinary yes. yep. So really, once you put it together, it's, it can be up near 25%, 30%. 
and they do say that individuals who are sole proprietor um, tax, they pay the highest effective tax rates for that reason. Mm -hmm. Wow. And so then if you go LLC S Corp, mm -hmm. now you only pay money on your salary, not on the business. Did I hear that correctly? No, you're paying 15.3% on the the sa on the salary that you're paying yourself. Okay. But because if it's going to, through an LLC, uh -huh. it's still a pass-through entity. So that, that remaining profit still gets passed on to your ordinary income. So as Shanae was talking about, she she was saying how that 15.3 on the LLC sole proprietorship, you're paying taxes on that. Yeah. But then if you're making money nine to five or side hustlers, yeah. you're making the money that you're making making at the job, that's being taxed. Okay. And those combined incomes are going to effectively increase your taxes. But one thing you can consider is if in the, those first few years you're unprofitable, meaning that your business is operating at a loss, right. let's say you're making $50,000 in your nine to five, and you have like a $5,000 or $10,000 loss, yeah. that $10,000 loss can then be applied to that nine to five income, bringing your taxable income to 40,000, and thus potentially lowering your tax liability overall. So let's say this business owner is already making $50,000. In net profit. In net profit. So mm -hmm. let's say this business owner, because thank you for correcting me, um, is let's say this business owner is making $125,000 gross. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. And then after that, what they're paying themselves is the $50,000 in net profit. Are they an LLC or do they need to be an S Corp? So at that stage, um, if you're grossing, you know, $125,000 um, and you're netting a comfortable 50, it depends on what went in between that 125 and the 50. Because with you know, our clients, we're going to make sure that in that those expenses, it includes hopefully a salary. At that gross level, you should hopefully be paying yourself a little something, even okay. if it's $30,000, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because the benefits of being an S Corp. The IRS also understand that people can take advantage of it. Yeah, mm -hmm. So you don't want to let S Corp taxes if you can't afford to put yourself on payroll, mm -hmm. right? Got because you. because you can potentially avoid that 15.3% taxes, the IRS is looking at, okay, well, they're expecting to recoup that 15.3% in payroll. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the good thing about being a business owner is that your payroll is now a tax deduction. So it ends up lowering your um your business. net income. Oh. Yes, exactly, which lowers your taxable income. Exactly. So you see the ripple effect. Yeah. And also wow. eliminating that additional 15.3%. What? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna drop all the information below. I know y'all sitting at the table like, what in the world did she just say? It sounded good. <laughs> but I need some more information. I'm telling you, what? Okay, cool. All right. So um how is it legally to write off a D Wagon? Now, okay, what are the cars you can and what is explain that whole thing? Because I know it's like what the IRS 179. 179. Yes, so, so it's um, section 179 deduction. Okay. So again, the tax codes change. I would say every year, not really every year, they change whenever they want to change them. Mm -hmm. For real, for real. But mm -hmm. it's up to your CPAs. Well, you know, you get CPAs because we do continuing education. Yeah. So we're always staying on top of new tax codes. Um, they should be a knowledge of what tax code can positively benefit you. So again, we work with influencers, creatives. Um, a lot of them having lavish cars are a part of their image, mm. right? So rather than um, choosing to depreciate the vehicle, which is means you just take that expense and you spread it over year over year, mm -hmm. if by year end we're looking for a way to substantially lower your taxable income to mm -hmm. save you a lot in tax liability, Rather than depreciating the year over year, let's look at vehicles that we can legally deduct in full in the current year, right? So this is where that Section 179 deduction comes from. <laughs> 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 Section 179, where it states that if you own um, a business, uh, a, a, bu a business, and buy a vehicle that you're placing in service for for business, right? Mm -hmm. You have to place it in service. It's one yeah. of the requirements. So you yeah. can't just buy it and it's just a personal car. It yeah. has to be placed in service for business. So even if that's you going to and from the post office, to and from client meetings, you're placing that vehicle in service. If that vehicle weighs more than six thousand pounds carrying weight. Definitely know that, because it's specifically carrying weight, right? Carrying um, weight means, like, when you sit, when it's just sitting there, it weighs 6,000 pounds. No, so carrying weight is um, the weight of the vehicle, uh -huh. um, plus if you are going to, like, 
What is the carrier weight? When it's fully loaded. So basically, fully loaded, yeah. that's what it is. Yeah, so basically fully loaded. So you want to make sure, like, some G-Wagons may fall right under that, that 6,000. Right. So you want to make sure that the gross weight of that vehicle, gross, I think, GWR, gross yeah. weight of that vehicle weighs, is over 6,000 pounds, right? Okay. So with that, and basically a little bit of history with that, and you can see how the tax code is used to incentivize and do different... Basically, one of the things is because they realize that they can dictate and change behavior yeah, by yeah. changing the tax code. Yeah. They put specific things. So the history with that is George Bush was in office. Yeah. He thought he's the oil, oil and gas guy. Yeah. So he was just like, how can we keep these SUVs? How can, how can people keep these SUVs? Wow. How can we get people to keep buying these SUVs? So he put this code in place to get people to... To incentivize people to buy SUVs, SUVs. SUVs. Yes. and buy, buy heavier vehicles, right? To keep the, the oil industry around. So with that, yes, the 6,000 pounds, it needs to be placed in service before the end of the year. Okay. And also, again, talking about the economical piece, very, very important. Okay. Making sure that your business is making substantially more than the cost of that vehicle. Yeah. And you want to make sure you're doing it under your business name as well. Yes. Put your car in your business name. Yep. Yes. So okay. when you go to that dealership, you want to make say specifically, hey, this is for my business. Okay. And they're going to give you a separate form, different documents. Yes. Depending on where you're at, you may have business credit. A lot of people just starting off that you might not have business credit. So you you can you can do what's called, you might be able to co-sign, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, don't, we, don't, we don't do credit over here. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? You know, my people, we pay no, cash. No, 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 for sure, for sure, for sure. Now, but, what, but if we are paying cash... Is there a different process? Yeah, that's a great question. That's mm -hmm. a very great question. So it's based, this is the beautiful thing about depreciation. Mm -hmm. As Shania mentioned, mm -hmm. depreciation is probably one of the biggest tax hacks in the world. Okay. Because depreciation doesn't match how much money you spend. Mm -hmm. Depreciation, think about this, depreciation is based on the purchase price. That relates to the home, that relates to the car, that relates to several other properties. So if... One of our business owners purchased a car for twenty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Break that down. If you purchase a vehicle for twenty thousand dollars, right? Even if you put down five, you can still right off the so now in the event of a G wagon. So let's go there. Let's that's go where now. We started, right? Come on now. Right. So now in the event of a G wagon, if that vehicle is let's say one hundred and fifty thousand, is typically what a new one's gonna go for. Nah, G wagon right now is going about two twenty five. Yeah, they going to yeah, they're they going gonna lie. Lie. Yeah, because I mean, it's, you can't. They're not producing them. Yeah. Quickly. Yep. But if they're twenty, I'll buy it in cash. <laughs> 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 I'm about to get that. All right, yeah. so, okay, we got yeah. a G-Wagon. Let's say, for, just for even numbers, $200,000. $200,000, but if you put down $50,000 yep. to get that asset... Right. Well... Uh, and no, no, that, that, that's not really an asset. No, hold on, but... It I, could be. I, I see I what said, you're saying. No, no, but it is in, in the tax world. It yeah, is. tax world. Right, it's tax world. right. And, and I want to depreciate that. But it is a depreciating asset. You can't, yes. you can't depreciate a liability in the tax world. Exactly. Yes. That's what we call a depreciating asset. Right. I have to be careful because, you know. Yeah, yeah, I got you. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you in that part. I was like, well, it's not, uh, but I Yeah, get so yeah. say, but the total cost was 200000 Well, guess what we're writing off? We're writing off 200000 even though you put down 50000 Exactly. So it doesn't the matter. The first year. Exactly. Okay, so now I don't promote financing cars. I don't promote that. I'm going to be very clear. Right. right. this camera right here, CJ. I do, not promote, <laughs> I do not promote financing cars, but this is a fair question mm -hmm. for people who do have car payments. Especially, again, those who are in business and you're looking for ways to, you know, cut costs um, yeah, yeah. towards the end of the year. These are going to be top, top five strategies top five that strategies you can use for sure. So if someone goes in there and finance, they finance the vehicle and their payment is... Five hundred dollars a month. If it's above that six thousand pound, they can still write off the entire car, even though they're making current payments on the vehicle. Exactly, because again, the purchase, purchase, purchase price. Purchase price. Now, and then, and there's different, and that's why, from a <laughs> from from a from a tax perspective and from a cash flow perspective, right? This is a good thing. Now, if your goal oh, solely is right to if, if it's if it's solely to be Debt free, yeah. then you know. Thank then, you. Then thank you, bro. Thank you, bro. You know how we do, baby. I see. I see. We, we know how we do over at the table. I'm gonna I'm gonna the you. table. You feel me? But, but I mean, that was a fair but, question for me to ask because yes. not everyone watching this is going to believe in my method. 
Right. For sure. So I respect that. And and with us too, uh -huh. we always like to put out the options, right? Because Absolutely. we like to I get you. we because a lot of unfortunately what happens is with a lot of tax professionals, they're like, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's disrespectful. You can't yeah, yeah. you shouldn't tell someone what they can't it should do. it should be like, how can you make this happen? Yes. These are your options. Mm -hmm. This is what you can do if yeah. you want to do it. Yeah. Like you if like you come to me and say, Hey, I want to ride off my whole I want to ride off my Porsche, I want to ride off my whole vehicle. Right. I'm not gonna say you can't do that. I'm gonna okay. say this is how you do it. Okay. Are you in financially in position, right? right? The economical piece. Okay. Are you, do you have the business credit to do it? Okay. Do you even need the car right mm. now, too? That's another mm. question Purpose. I'm gonna ask you. Like, mm. what's, are you, do you just, are you just looking for a write off or uh, were you already in the market for a vehicle? Mm -hmm. Okay. You know what I mean? That's important to me. Okay. Yes. So that's, that's, that's one piece. So, and then two, with the, the financing piece, if hypothetically some person out there wants to finance a vehicle, yeah. You could do the, you could do the car notes, you could also do leasing as well. I think leasing is the most expensive way to purchase a car. It is, and but it but sometimes mathematically it ends up being a bigger tax write-off if you if you do it with the lease. Mm. But and that's why business owners do lease it because they can continue to write it off. Write it off. Because yeah. you could do it based on the lease. This is where you could do the, just the lease payments instead right. of the whole purchase price. Yeah. And you could just write off the lease payments. Wow, I didn't know that. Yep. That's and, new for me. Yeah. So that's why business still owners still ain't leasing. Right, no, no, no. But I don't do payments. No, no, no. But if if you're, but I see what you mean. But if you're an individual yeah, yeah. that wants to do lease payments, then that's that's Got another you. thing too. And uh, just to be very clear, I added an, another asterisk nuance to this, mm -hmm. based mm -hmm. on the business use, right? Mm -hmm. So you could have a business vehicle, but maybe you're using it seventy percent of the time for business and thirty percent of the time for personal. Mm -hmm. So, right. Dean, you can only write off 70%. 70%. Exactly. So I just want people to be clear. It's not always 100%. It's based on the business use. So if you go out there and you person a, a G-Wagon and you legit come back and say, y'all ask me, hey, Anthony, how often you are using it for the business? Maybe about 50%. Technically, I only can write off 50% of the vehicle. The expenses, the right. Expenses because, again, leave. being able, to, when you are hiring professionals, we have to be able to back you up, right? Because right, right, right. now the IRS always say, you you have this vehicle. Well, how did you get to your regular job? Or how did you get to uh, from the supermarket? That's a good How did you get see? to them from? Because when see? we file taxes, they do ask, like, do you have another vehicle available for personal use? They that ask is so that. good. Yes. So, okay, then. <laughs> Let me ask this question. Now, you know me, I'm thinking what people are thinking about. So, <laughs> I purchased a G-Wagon. What if I purchase a hoop tee? Mm. Then, then when they ask that question, I say yes. A hundo. Exactly. Uh, we can you now. <laughs> now you can defend exactly. me because we have a legit car. Exactly. And you need to drive it legit. Exactly. But now you can honestly on paper. Ooh. You can say I only use this car though when ooh. I'm going to business meetings, when I'm going to business events, when I'm taking care of clients. That's what this car, my hoopty though. I get to Walmart. Oh. Uh, right. I get to the kids pick up from school with this car. Right. Yes. All right. Cool. Great. 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 Oh man. Boy, listen, I mean, we got a little bit of time. Y'all here. Y'all drove all the way up here. <laughs> you know, we're going to dinner after this, so we, we got a little bit of time. I, mean, I don't want to rush this, because I think it's very important. Um, one of the things that, on the personal finance, uh, financial side of things in my space, right, is I have a lot of entrepreneurs. And actually, me and you were talking about this because I'll be moving. Mm -hmm. And you was like, hey, this, this is how you do it to win. One of the things I see is when people go get a mortgage and they're entrepreneurs, Mm -hmm. And they can't get a mortgage because they're not showing that they made money. Mm. So Man, it's like, listen. how, how, uh, <laughs> how one, because, you know, with me just starting out on my own, transitioning mm -hmm. and starting my own LLC and, and building my own brand on my own, it's like, okay, cool. I know up front I want to purchase a home here in the next few months, yes. in the next year or so. And how do I do that properly mm -hmm. while still riding off? I spent a lot of money yes. to, to, to build this studio. Um, I have a team of people who are paying. So I'm like, how do you take advantage of the write-offs without hurting you mm -hmm. to go and get a mortgage with your income? Yeah, so... What is that? When you think about expenses, and this is for everyone to know, every financial decision that you make are going to have two type of implications. Okay. We're going to have the economic implication, and we are going to have a tax implication, okay. right? Okay. Um, so again, financial decision, let me write a bunch off, but what's my economical um, consideration? What's my tax consideration? Yeah. Tax-wise, I'm going to save a lot. Economically, you're not going to look good on paper to get a loan. 
right? Got you. So every decision that you make, you want to weigh both. Okay. Um, the good thing about tax planning is that we will weigh out both for you. Okay. Based upon your financial goals, yes. let's figure out what the economical impact is going to be and what the tax impact is going to be. Okay. Um, and get sure your goals quicker, because if you're telling me, hey, look, listen, let's hold up one expensing for this year, um, as an accountant, or let's defer some expenses, let's defer some... Because I want to get a mortgage, yeah, right? Yeah. That's that's my goal right now. Well, as your CPA, I'm going to make sure that you are in the best position for that. Yeah, yeah. That's going to enhance your economic capabilities, yes. but it may negatively impact your tax. So you know, good. so it's it's always going to be a way of the two. Yeah, that's so good, man. Because mm -hmm. that is something that really, really alarms me uh, when I see these entrepreneurs. Oh, man, you can write this off. You can write, I write off everything, man. Like, yeah, I'm... I didn't make no money last year. Yeah. And then they'd be like, yeah, I can't get a mortgage. Like, why? You just made like a half a million dollars. The thing about it is like, you have to ask yourself, what did you lend to you if you have zero dollars on your tax return? Come on. Because okay. I'm not giving you one of my dollars. <laughs> yeah. You ain't got a dollar in profits even. Like, I'm not doing that. Oh, <laughs> oh man. All right. Um, let's end on this one. It's going to be a tough question. Uh -oh. oh, that means you got to take care of it. Uh oh. <laughs> And, and, and we're gonna cover the, that one that the children's piece is key too. Let's talk oh. about that. Well, how do you yeah. how do you do? Because that's a good one. Because I think hiring your kids, you do so much there. For sure. Number one is you're teaching them entrepreneurship. You're mm -hmm. teaching them own, uh, ownership. Uh, two, you, you're teaching them about money. You know how to be a good steward or how to work um, in exchange for money. Right. And then three. That's a, it sounds like it's a good tax write-off. Absolutely. So break that down for us. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you a real quick run, uh, rundown of it. So yes, you could, as a business owner, you could pay your children through the business, and there's a couple of requirements in order to do so, right? So the child has to be under the age of 18 in order to do it. Okay. There's no age minimum okay. to do it, but I re generally recommend starting at the age of seven because okay. there's a court case based on a, a seven-year-old, okay. and they pass the court case. Some people okay. do it younger than that, but I'm just putting it out there publicly, conservatively. Yeah, yeah. Seven years old <laughs> right. is, a rate, is, is a number to consider. And then you could pay them up to the standard deduction amount, right? So this year, 12550 okay. is that number. Yep. You want to make sure you pay them up to that amount, and then they don't have to pay taxes. You don't have to pay taxes on that income that you're paying them. Okay. And then you want to make sure they're performing legitimate business services for you, for your business, right? So you're not just paying them the money. They're actually working in the business. Yeah. So you want to look at things that they can do, clean up the house, help you with ads, maybe help you with internet marketing, whatever the case is. Okay. And it also needs to be based on what the market's going to pay them for that type of service, right? So Pay it, that seven-year-old or pay anyone to do that? Generally, like, anyone. Okay. And, and even, like, a, a seven-year-old, too, because okay. the seven-year-old can only... Do certain do, capabilities do, do, of do that job description. Uh, okay. At, at a certain quality level, I got right? You. So if you're paying a seven-year-old to say, hey, clean up the office for me, yep. you're not paying that seven-year-old. Seven year old, two hundred dollars an hour. You're not right. You can't. Yeah, no, you can't yeah come on. No. Okay. That, that's that's. I mean, unless they're magical. I'm right. Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Harry Potter, you got the wand. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. These new kids is different these days. Hey, so. I mean, yeah. I mean, now, now, now after that, now fifteen year old, you, might, year. you might be paying them a hundred dollars an hour if they go in and they really do a good job. Right. Maybe not. I wouldn't. Maybe no. Maybe internet stuff. Maybe yes. like I was. I got you. Yeah, I got yeah. You. If you got because again for that service, ads, if you yeah. look at the average market value for that cleaning service, it may just be twenty five, thirty dollars an hour. Yeah, yeah. So to, how can we justify that hundred? I right? got you. So I that's what you. we want to make sure it costs a conservative compare in comparison. To, okay, what would a normal person, you know, of this skill level be paid, be paid. for this okay. exactly? All right, cool. Got all it. for sure. So that that's that piece, and then yes, you just want to make sure it's documented. You give them a job description, their performance services, and that money is going specifically from your business account to their account, so they need to have a separate bank account in order to do that. So those are general requirements. There's a lot of other nuances, details. Make sure you get with your tax professional in order to go ahead and do that properly. But yes, it's a beautiful thing because we're... This is the beautiful thing about the tax code. Now that you have knowledge, right, about the tax code, mm -hmm. you can then save money because these are things that you're already paying for, right? Mm -hmm. And there's a saying out there that there's two tax systems, one for the rich and one for the poor, but I don't agree with that. Okay. I think that's a lie. Okay. It's really one for the ignorant. Like, we talked about that. that Ignorance that tax. Ignorant tax. Ignorant tax. That's, 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 that's <laughs> my kind of talk. That's, that's a bad grammar. That's ignorant. That ignorant. 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 Urban dictionary. Right. <laughs> ignorant <laughs> tax. Ignorant tax or enlightened. Ooh. Ooh. I didn't hear that one. You know what I'm saying? Ignorance tax. 
or enlighten God. So if you're enlightened, what you're going to know is this. You make money, you spend money, you pay taxes on that money. Yeah. The ain't it. Yeah. You make money, right. you pay the taxes, and then you live on what you have left, right? Wow. And that's no, and that unfortunately, that's what happens to a lot of nine to fivers. So it's important to wow. consider getting into business, not only for a tax perspective, but also as a way to create wealth and legacy for yourself and your family. Yeah, yeah just to also just give one more wealth gem, um, because parents are okay, well, I pay my, my kids' money, what can I do with it after? Mm -hmm. A great wealth hack is to pay your child that 12500 Go ahead and put six thousand dollars in the Roth IRA. Go ahead and start mm. retirement saving or yeah. you know education saving with that money. Don't just leave it in your bank account and you let it sit. Let's also yeah. invest that as well. Y'all <laughs> <laughs> hear about that Roth IRA dropping? Yeah. So let me ask you this question: Can you pay your child twelve thousand five hundred dollars if you do not have a business? So let's say if if she is a nine to five employee. Can she still pay her child twelve thousand five hundred dollars a year and write that off without having a business? Hmm. So, I mean, we have to just readjust, like re go through the principles. Okay. Is that person in pursuit of profit? Well, she's make she has a job, so no, right? So I was gonna say like that song. Oh no. <laughs> 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 so that's the thing. No, that's because she yeah. has a job. Now the IRS again can say, well, you weren't in pursuit it's of profit. profit. Yeah. That's it. It. And, Boy, I, this is I, and it is what it is, right? So we're not here to, you don't have to fight it. Yeah, yeah. Just know this is this is what it is. So mm -hmm. to me, it just sounds like legit. And let's just be real. Everyone's not called to be this huge business owner. For sure. But everyone can have a legit business. Yes. Because I think everyone has a hobby. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how do we just now just make that hobby still a hobby, but it's a legit business mm -hmm. that we enjoy? But we don't want to call it a hobby yeah. no more. Right, right, right. <laughs> That's right. And, and the I reason and the reason why that is because there's a specific law and rule in the tax code called a hobby law. Yes. Rule. Oh. So yes, it's 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 a thing because they know that people like to golf yep. and then write it off and call that a business. Right. So, so you, can I write off my golfing? Is if you are, are you teaching people how to golf? No. But I, I may take people out there to golf and talk about business. It depends. I mean, honestly, in that case, I like so the thing about it is that they also got rid of entertainment as an expense. They did. Yes. So in this tax climate, that'll be we have to talk a little bit more about that. Can you write off, <laughs> can you write off liquor? So it depends if you ordered liquor and you were at a business dinner. Absolutely. And you documented that dinner and it was legit. Yeah. How do you properly document a dinner? So properly documented dinner. So we're going to dinner tonight. So how do I do that? Part? <laughs> okay, let's go. We got I was you. on you. Yeah, we got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we got you. Business meals. So business meals is a very great tax write-off deduction. Okay. Business meals. What they allow you to do is if you're if you're having a business meal with a potential client, employee, someone that you're interviewing for a podcast, for instance. Yep. Then you are able to deduct for that business meal. You want to document, one, the business purpose of that meal. What are you guys talking about? Okay. Coming back on the show again. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hopefully, prayfully. <laughs> Part Absolutely. two. Part two. Yeah. Number two, you want to also document the attendees. Yeah. Get their names down. Yeah. Then also you want to document how much it costs for that meal. And then that, that includes tips as well. So the tips can be included as well. Okay, so that's okay. not separate. Okay. So those are the things that you want to make sure you document. That is if you are having meals locally. So now one of the things that you could do is when you're traveling for business purposes, mm -hmm. business purposes meaning that you're traveling to go to a conference seminar, if you're in real estate looking at different properties, visiting, researching, mergers, acquisition, d deals or whatever the case is, you don't necessarily have to have a meal with a person. You could have a meal by yourself because now you're away from your home city. Exactly. And you got to eat. You no, business eat. travel meals. So it's a business oh, travel meal. Um, real quick, yes or no? Can I? Can you write off a first class plane ticket for a business trip? So yeah, but given your um, economic status, if it's as long as it's not luxury, if uh, you could afford it now, yeah. now we gotta get into that the economic. That's where the economic piece. This yes. is why, yes. honestly, at the end of the day, when you are self-employed, you need a CPA. Yeah. Because it's like <laughs> I have a lot of questions, and I'm like, and I teach personal finance. Mm -hmm. But still, on the business side of things, you all understand, okay, here's everything that in that 72,000-page book, mm -hmm. right, that, hey, Anthony, 
you can do this, A, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. And I don't know all that stuff. Mm -hmm. This is very, 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 very important. All and right. Not to cut you off, too. Yeah. This is an important thing, too. I'm a CPA. Yeah. Shanae is a CPA. Yeah. I love my CPAs. Yeah. They can't all do this. Ooh. And I'm going to tell you why, right? Ooh. Again. Wow. <laughs> and, and this is coming from a CPA, Ouch. right? This is coming from a CPA. We don't know shade. No, this, no. But, but we don't know shade. No, no, it's not even shade. This, I just, just to, just to be, bring some transparency to the conversation. Yeah. So again, the CPA exam uh, prepares you to be to have a broad knowledge of accounting and tax concepts. Mm -hmm. There's not a deep dive, right? And like I said, me going to the top accounting school and not understanding how to proactively save money on taxes, I didn't know that I had to do a lot of self learning. <laughs> Shanae also did that. Experience mm -hmm. a whole bunch of things, right? So when you're looking to hire someone, it's not enough just to find a CPA. You have to find another category and have to create this, this group yeah. called the tax elite. Tax elite? Tax elite, bro. Say what? Elites. What's the tax elite? Yeah. Tax elite. <laughs> I'm glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> tax elite. So another acronym. Yeah. So E-L-I-T-E. E-L-I-T-E. -E. Yes. Okay. First part of that is education. Yeah, yeah. Did they go to school for accounting or tax? So what you're going to find is tax preparers, people who, there's no requirements in order to do people's taxes. That's like your H&R blocks. Exactly. Yes. Not knocking them, um, right. yeah. but like your tax slayers or people like that online, just all that. And are, real quick, are y'all fans of like those online tax companies? I don't really think they do you justice. Like, you, you need a human being. So, I mean, if you have simple, like, you just have a W-2, you just have, like, dependents, and, I mean, just have a W-2 and you make less than, I would say, like, $60,000 a year, and yeah. it's just W-2, then you're probably fine with just doing it by yourself, just plug okay. the numbers in. Um, but once you start, you know, moving along certain thresholds where you're, you're making retirement contributions that are pretty high, yeah. um, you're paying for child dependent care expenses, you actually own your home, you actually have stocks and you invest, and yeah. you also have a rental property. As your tax code, um, your tax life becomes more complex, and I typically say to people, once you start to trigger schedules A through E, yeah. you definitely want to use a CPA or tax expert. Okay. Schedule A is your itemized deductions. Okay. Schedule B is going to be your interest and dividends. Schedule okay. C is for your business. Schedule D is capital gains. Okay. Um, the schedule E, I see, and earned income, credit. Yeah. Um, yeah, so like once you start to trigger those, well, Schedule E is rent, rent and royalties. Yeah. So once you start to trigger those schedules A through E, you now want to get some help. Get some help. Yes. All right, so we got E and the E. Education. Yep. L, legal representation. Can they represent you in front of the IRS in the event that you get audited? As a CPA, we have the authority to represent you in front of the IRS in the, in the event that you get audited. Thank you. So Thank you. We can hand that for you. Thank you. You'll be like, yo. Yeah. I got an issue. I got a letter. That's why y'all, you know, yeah. that's why y'all. Really? Yesterday's price yeah, yeah, yeah. is not today's price. It's so late. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So that's that's L. You also have enrolled agents that have the same authority as well. Enrolled yeah. agents, also dope people. So one of the things with enrolled agents, the distinction between CPAs and enrolled agents, if you're trying to figure out who to work with, yeah. enrolled agents, they took a three-part exam from the IRS in order to be able to get this enrolled agent license, right? Yeah. yeah. The thing with enrolled agents is I kind of see them as real estate agents, meaning that you don't have to go to school or anything to be an enrolled agent. Yeah. You could just take the exam and show that you're yeah. under, understand the tax code. Enrolled agents are super technically proficient in taxes, so mm -hmm. they're really great. CPAs, you have to, the minimum required is to have a, a, a bachelor's in accounting. Mm -hmm. Depending on the state, 150 credit hours, which is almost like a master's, pass a four-part exam that has less than 50% of people passing it. And then you have to have all these other you have to work under CPA for a year. Yeah. And then one quick statistic, less than one less than one percent of CPAs are people that look like us. Wait, 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 say it again. So out of a hundred percent, only one percent only one percent of them are black? Less than one percent. So we're not even a full one percent? <laughs> are you serious? Yeah. Wow. <gasps> <I gotta pause. laughs> yeah. I mean, I had to pause. Yeah. That I mean, was it, a it, thing. It, it, it's so funny. I have a homegirl, Amy Porterfield, on it, and she really spoke about black ladies or black queens, sure. right? Yeah. Sure. And she was like, yo, we need more black representation. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I get hit hard by the white audience by being so uh, strong for my black community. It's not that I don't, I don't love white people. I love white people. But I'm tired of only seeing white people 
up here. Especially mm-hmm. in finance. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? How come we can be up here too? Mm-hmm. And it's like, we need more people like yourselves being educated, being up there, having the intelligent conversation because it, it will make more black people want to listen. Exactly. Right. If I see people who look like me with people who don't look like me, I feel better. I'm more prompt to be like, yo, let me listen because my sister up there, my brother up there, and I don't know them, but they look like me. But when mm-hmm. they don't see us, when we don't see us, we're kind of like, uh, do they have our right interests in mind? And, I, mm-hmm. and so, you know, I, I'm sorry. I ain't mean to go off on that because you know, y'all know me. I love all We love people. everybody. Yes. But yes. representation matters. And yes. that bothers me that only 1% of us are black. It does. It's it's a real thing. And not to go too far on the subject, but I did have a, a a client that told me that she worked with someone of the other race and it did not look out for her best interest. She she approached them about doing like like an estate plan, multimillionaire. She owns a record label. Yeah. And they asked her, why do you need that? Wow. So that and I and I work I work with athletes. Same yeah. thing as well. Yeah. Just so it's 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 a real thing and we do need to be represented. But I understand it too, right? And I'm and this is something I'm gonna put out there. Uh, we're both CPA rappers. You know mm. what I mean? Yeah. So growing up, mm. what I'm used to, what I seen was, mm. in order to be wealthy or to make money, I had to be a rapper or athlete. Yes, yes. I can't play ball, I'm trash. Right, I'm right, not right. gonna lie, bro. <laughs> I got you. I got you. I'm, well, if we're hooping, yeah. I'm the guy that you pretty much gotta, like, just forget all the rules. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. traveling, I'm, I'm looking crazy. Right. Butterfingers with the football. Yeah. So my joint was, I was rapping. I so I you. wanted to be a rapper, rapper. Right. But then as I grew up and I started looking at when I was take I, to, I went to uh, college I did really want well an accounting class and that's kind of how I went down that route so that was another side tangent from the elite oh yeah yeah so but we got the E we got we the L. L and then the I what we've been talking about this whole podcast integrity integrity you gotta you gotta work with someone with integrity right? right are they going to ask you to do things that are not right Telling right. you to claim kids you don't have Ooh. telling you to invest in companies that you don't really and, own and then and let's be real and I want to say in the black community, because I know it happens in all communities, but a lot of communities, people are claiming other people's kids. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's some some small tax offices that are like, hey, do you need any kids? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We got you. They'll, they'll, like, match you up with just a random social. Like, it's, it's terrible. It's a real thing. Mm-hmm. All right, what's the next one? So, that's the I. T, training. Are yeah. they constantly being trained up? Yeah. As a CPA, we have to be constantly trained up, continuing professional credits. Yeah. CPEs. Yeah. And then also, too, keeping up with the latest, greatest tax codes, too. Biden has a whole bunch of changes that are going to impact individuals, make it more than 400000 It's going to impact everyone. Yeah. But the, the, he, the promise is that taxes are not going to increase for people making under 400000 You have anything else after the T? E. Last E. Yeah, yeah. E. Yeah. Experience. So how much experience do they have? Do they have experience working with your specific industry and years of experience as well? You want to work with someone that at least has 10 years of experience in the industry, I think that's a good number yeah. um, to to look into. Yeah. So, those are those so are things the to get. That's, that's the elite, elite. the tax elites. So let's end it right here. Here's the hard question you brought it up. And my bad. One more thing with the tax elite, all of the tax elite do tax planning too. So that's the key thing. Mm-hmm. Tax yes. planning is sitting down with a client, looking at. And that's the expensive part, right? <laughs> that, 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 yeah, that, I mean, I was like, when I when I got y'all's first bill, I, and I was reading, I was like, tax <laughs> planning. And here's so funny is. I sat down with uh, an accountant of the opposite race, and I didn't get none of that offer. Of course. Yeah. Wow. None of it. Yeah. And I called, paid for an hour. I was like, hey, what do you want to do? I told him about what I do. Oh, okay, yeah, do this, do that. Okay, well, great. And none of what you and I talked about in that hour, I called, I called my boy CJ. I called my home girl for set. I'm like, yo, this, did you know this? You know this? You know this? You know this? And everyone's like, yo, 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 yo. I was like, yo. And That's one hour with the information that you gave me for free, Made me be like, all right, let me cut this check. Mm-hmm. For an hour that I paid for, I'm like, I was still lost and confused. Mm-hmm. For sure. So when I met you two months ago, I felt so good. And then our boy hooked me up with you, and I was like, yo. And then you tell me, y'all two working together. I said, this is God. Yeah. <laughs> this is God. And I was like, yo, I'll pay that fee because I know I'm in good hands. And here's another part is I'm sewing in to my community. Mm-hmm. Amen. Yeah. And, I, and, and you, I don't know what you all are standing for, character and integrity. But I got to ask this question. Let's just be real at the table. A lot of people were not fans of Donald Trump, specifically who looked like us, mm-hmm. right? And I don't want to go into that. I don't want to go into Donald Trump. Was it good? Was it bad? But Donald Trump was all about taxes. 
He saved a lot of wealthy people on with taxes. Biden is coming through and making some changes. Mm. Not from a president talking, not from a cut character integrity for, on Trump or Biden. I'm talking about solely when it comes to taxes and money. Mm -hmm. Okay? Who's better for America? Ooh. I mean, so, all right, looking at just the background of these two individuals, one was, is a businessman. Yes. Other person is not. Yeah. Right? Um, that dictates where the policies are stemming from. Okay. So, of course, Donald Trump, I'm, I'm doing what's best for me, my friends, but everybody else who also want to be like me and my friends, because yeah, yeah. it makes us the, the tax code for wealthy individuals who have businesses, who have assets. You'll be able to benefit if you have business and assets too. Yeah. So a lot of people who were um, against um, Trump's and his tax plans, mm -hmm. it's because they are not on that playing field. Ooh. But we should never be just. That should encourage you to get on that playing field. Ooh. That made me want to start more businesses. It made me want to buy more assets, right? Spicy. So <laughs> it's like, okay, people have to understand that, you know, the tax code, again, it does provide a guideline to, well, who is the government favoring now, right? And we're all under the same legislation, so why not be on the right side of the playing field? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. That's, that's my take. And isn't Biden <laughs> thinking about getting rid of the, the 179? He's about doing a lot. He's the, he, this is this is what he's trying to do. He's trying to raise between two to uh, four trillion dollars in tax, in tax revenue over the next, I think, five ten years, right? Okay. So with that, he is going. He's eliminating some of the tax incentives that he perceives the rich. His eyes, you're rich if you make more than four hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. The rich are using someone who's making sixty thousand dollars are not riding off g wagons right. per se. Right. So. He's not, he's, he's just like, you know, we need to get these people, we need to get some more money from these people on this side. Okay. So, tying it back to what we were talking about before, the key thing is tax planning, right? So looking proactively at your life, business, regulatory requirements, or to help you proactively save money on taxes. You made a comment saying that, yeah, the line item that was expensive um, when, when you're working, when you had that consult. Right. But that's one thing to consider is like really it's not a cost, it's an investment. And yeah, I'll tell you and I'll I tell you and I'll tell you why. Really. Now tax preparation, that's a cost. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's really no there's no benefit to you. You're just literally checking the box. It's it's compliance work. Right. That's low level work. Yes. We do that. We can help you with that all day, every day. But tax planning, yes, that's an investment with a high ROI, right? Yeah. So hypothetically speaking, there's uh let's say you work with a, a large accounting firm, right? Yeah. And and you are a business that has to pay a million dollars in taxes, yeah. that accounting firm is probably going to charge you. It was like, we got you, but you got to pay us $300,000 to get rid of it. But guess what? Instead of giving the government $1 million, You gave them $300,000. You gave the accounting firm $300,000. Right. And you get to keep $700,000. Mm -hmm. So... It's <laughs> that's a three plus X return ROI return on investment on your yes. investment. Yo, listen, so, man, I'm I, I, I'm blown away. I mean, I this is the kind of conversations I love having at the table where we can bring educated people, whether they're black or white. I really get excited when they look like me and they know their stuff. Y'all know your stuff. I'm in good hands, and I want y'all to be in good hands. Um, do y'all have a course? Do y'all have anything where they can go online and learn more of this? You know, I mean, and, and I don't care what the cost is. I don't want to be too explicit. <laughs> <laughs> but I think how can, is there somewhere where they can go to really learn more information? Do y'all teach this on the course online? Do you have a book? Do y'all have anything? We got a lot. <laughs> what's, the, what's the first thing they should go in and do you? So, um, Michelle and I both have ebooks okay. available for purchase for the public for those who want to learn a little bit more about okay. tax in that way. Um, and we also do teach a tax training program. Okay. Um, it's called the Tax Essentials Learning Program. Tax Essentials Learning, learning Program. program. Okay. Help for short. Okay. Okay. Where individuals who want to learn how to do taxes themselves to make extra income, but a lot of the people who actually come through help want to learn so that they can just know for themselves. Right. 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 Um, so that's also an offer as well. Okay. Cool. Yep. 
Anything else? Yeah, so we have a course, so basically Tax Wealth 101, tax right, wealth which teaches you how to proactively save money on taxes. Okay. That includes our ebooks, that includes some mm -hmm. other materials to help you proactively save money on taxes. Super affordable, very reasonable, so we'll drop the link in the in the description. Absolutely. So, yeah. yes. Yeah, we're gonna have That's all... Gonna do, but you guys are gonna get hooked up and blessed with this, this, this information. Yo, we about to go to dinner, and my mind is like, what in the world? <laughs> I mean, this was absolutely amazing. And and listen, I'm going to drop all their information uh, in the show description. And I want y'all to, to go follow them on Instagram. They they both are just dropping knowledge on their social media accounts. But most importantly, I would definitely say get the courses, uh, take the TELP, so that way you can learn more. Uh, because maybe you, you don't need to retain their services personally, but at least get their mind at least get their education. So go check out that information. I'll make sure to put that in the show description um, and all the information. But I want to leave y'all with the scripture and affirmation of the day. Because we This show has been long, and this is great. Because, I mean, I, I have more questions. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm hungry, and, and, and we about to go get some to eat. Real quick, Ayo, I, yeah. not, to, not to cut you, I do have a tax wrap. Can I get some tax bars off? Yeah, go ahead, do it. Real quick. All right. It's called Ten Tax Commandments. Ten I'm, Tax Commandments. Ten tax, I'm, I'm gonna wrap this whole thing, all the things we talked about, it literally in this song. All right, so check this out. I'm gonna look at the camera. Look at this camera. Put them in this camera right here, CJ. Bye, 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 bye. Let's go. Let me check it out. Yeah. She got me. Check it out. Yo, look, I've been in this game for years. It made me an animal. There's rules to this code. I wrote me a manual, a step-by-step -step booklet for you to get. Your game on track, the feds off your back. Rule number uno, let the IRS know how much dough you hold, cause you know, yo. Evasion breeds penalties, especially if that prep messed up. Watch your tax go up. Number two, document expenses you could prove. Don't you know them boys treat lying like violence? Take it from your highness. I done see mad cats and chits cover their schemes and tricks. Number three, go form an LLC. A lawyer set that up. Properly draft up. Dina and the state up. Yep, for them big bucks. They'll get that paperwork cleaned up. Word up. Number four, I know you heard this before. Always rely on your CPA guy. Number five, never tax prep where you rest at. I don't care if they do it free. Tell them leave. Number six, that tax advance credit. Debt it. You think they're doing you a favor? No, forget it. Seven, this rule is so underrated. Keep your personal and business completely separated. Business and blood don't mix like politics with no tricks. Fighting business serious risk. Number eight, know the date your taxes due. If you miss the deadline, they'll be coming for you. Number nine should have been number one to me. If you start a business, stay away from hobbies. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hobby. They ain't trying to listen. You'll be stressing in the kitchen when them letters start hitting. Number ten, a strong word, corporation. Strictly for biz men, not for fresh men. If you ain't got investors, then say hell no, because they gonna want your money, rain, sleet, hell, snow. Follow these rules, you have mad bread to break up. If not, 24 years on the wake up. Flow, hit your tempo, watch your friends shake up. Caretaker did your makeup. When you pass, my bad, I hope you rake up. A lot of cash will be front in Jamaica with the Michelin star chef to hook a steak up. Gotta go, gotta go, more returns to makeup. Word up, tax king! <laughs> <laughs> We're not putting that either. <laughs> Pardon your head. Yo! <laughs> Only at the table can you oh, let her rap about Only taxes. That's fire. She's spitting the beat, he's spitting the lyrics. I'm sitting over here like, yo, let's go make this money. Let's, let's go. go. I'm gonna leave y'all with the scripture, man. <laughs> scripture and the affirmation of the day, man. Romans uh, chapter 13, verse 7 says, Pay to all what is owed to them. Taxes to whom taxes are owed. Revenue to whom revenue is owed. Mm -hmm. Respect to whom respect is owed. Mm -hmm. Honor to whom honor is owed. This week's affirmation, you guys already know, repeat after me while you're driving, while you're in your showers, and while you're watching me live on YouTube right now. I believe in myself and trust in my abilities to succeed in all that I do. I believe in myself and I trust in my abilities to succeed and all that you do. Do not be afraid to go start that business. Leave the hobby and go get you an LLC and make some money and keep some money and build your wealth. Yo, it's your boy, Anthony O'Neill, here at the table. I'm gonna see you on the next show. Peace out.